Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So believe it or not, in the six plus months that I've owned the RG351P, I've never really done any significant mods to it. Well, that's going to change today. We're going to do three different mods. First, I'm going to change out the buttons for these NES style buttons that you see here. I'm going to swap out the battery for a smaller but better battery. And finally, we're going to try to fix some of the light bleeding issues that come from this device. And if you're wondering, I got these buttons from Sakura Retro Modding. This is a little shop out of France that has all sorts of different 3D printed accessories and stickers available for your devices. And I'll leave links to everything in the video description below. Okay, so without any further delay, let's just jump right into it. Okay, let's start with the buttons here. These took about three weeks to arrive to Hawaii from France. And I've ordered from Sakura Retro Modding before, and so I knew it took a while, and I decided, you know, I'm just going to order a bunch of different things, and I'll try them out in different videos. So as you can see here, I have a variety of buttons that I want to show off in future videos. And for the RG351P, I decided to use these Super Nintendo style buttons. Now to open up the back, you're typically going to need a Torx TX screwdriver, but the sizes actually vary between the units. And here's the battery I use. This is a 3000 milliamp hour battery originally made for the Odraco Advance. This thing costs about $10, and despite the fact that it being 500 milliamp hours lower than the stock battery, it actually provides about an hour extra battery life. Okay, so let's open it up here, just the four screws on the back. And then you're going to want to push your thumbnail around the sides of it to undo all the clips in the plastic casing. If you're using the RG351M, it's not going to have any of these clips, so it's even easier to open up. First things first, go ahead and remove the battery connector. And we can move that to the side. Now the first thing I noticed when I opened this up was the really shoddy job I did when I tried to cover up the speaker cable that made the noise with my Wi-Fi chip. So we'll fix that in this video as well. It's amazing how bad I was at this six months ago and how much better I'm getting day after day. But that being said, I'm by no means an expert, but it's a pretty cool idea that I'm learning in front of everybody else. Okay, let's remove the ribbon cables from the analog sticks first. You just flip it up and then pull the ribbon cables out. And we might as well remove the shoulder buttons now so they don't get in the way later. Next, we're going to remove the speaker wires. These connectors are a little bit tricky to pull out, but just be persistent. And yeah, there's my terrible tin foil and electrical tape job here. Okay, after that, you're going to want to remove all of the different little screws that are holding the PCB inside. I think there's something like 12 or 13 screws altogether. Some of them are a little bit hard to find, so just make sure you take your time and look for them. Now, as you're pulling the PCB out, be careful with the volume wheel. You want to make sure that that doesn't get attached to anything. So you kind of want to pull it to the right as you're pulling it up. Okay, here we are inside. So you can see there's this big black piece of tape on the back of the monitor. And that's actually supposed to shield the light from the rest of the device. But as you can see on the right side of the display here, they didn't put any of that tape there. And that's where all the light bleeding comes from. So we're going to put a little bit of electrical tape there to try to cover that piece up. Okay, so replacing the buttons is actually pretty easy. The first thing you want to do is remove that rubber membrane. And then just push the buttons up from the back end towards you. And then you just pull them out. So here are the new buttons here, and these are very simple. You just have to put them in. They don't have to be put in any certain order other than just to make sure that the colors are matching perfectly. You want to have the two dark purple ones on the bottom left and the light purple ones on the top and right. Okay, you can just replace the rubber membrane here, and then I would verify the arrangement is correct so that you have the right coloring. Okay, so let's try to fix that light bleeding now. So I'm just using regular old electrical tape here. And then I made it a little bit too long, so I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter just to make sure it doesn't flush up against anything that's important in the case. And then I'm going to take a thinner piece and apply it to the outer side here. The biggest thing for me here is I didn't want it pushing up against that rubber membrane. So I'm using a spudger here just to try to push it in as much as I can and get it nice and tight. It's a bit of a tight squeeze here, so you may have to take a minute just to make sure it's in there. And there you go, this is what it looks like. And we'll test it later to see how it looks. Okay, so now let's address this tinfoil massacre I did earlier. 
So I'm just going to remove the electrical tape here as well as the tin foil. Now you're only going to have to do this trick if you have an RG351P that has built-in Wi-Fi, and not many of them have it. I just happened to get a very early unit that had it already installed. So you want to take a very small piece of tin foil, maybe one inch by one inch, and then you just fold it across and then wrap it around the rest of the wire. And you don't have to use aluminum foil here if you don't want to. For example, if you have shielding tape, you could use that instead. But after I apply the aluminum foil here, I'm just going to use a little piece of electrical tape and then cover the rest. The biggest thing for me is I want to make sure that the tin foil is not showing. One note here is the start and select have these little membranes, so don't lose them. Also be very careful with the reset button on the bottom of the device. Try your best not to lose that either. Now make sure you remove that upper band on the PC board. This is really hard to install when you have it on there. Start with the volume wheel and then push it in from the left and then just slowly kind of push it down into its spaces. And then use a tool to very gently bring up the display ribbon cable. Okay, so now is the time to actually put on that upper band from your circuit board. If you're using an RG350M, this upper band will not come off, so you just have to be very careful when you're reinstalling it. Okay, that's just about it. Let's start with the screws first, so we're going to make sure everything is nice in place. Okay, so once you have the board screwed in, now is the time to check to make sure you have all the buttons. Check your reset button, your power button, your volume wheel, as well as the face and start select buttons. Okay, once that's good to go, let's go ahead and put the rest together. If you have an RG350M or one with a Wi-Fi chip, make sure you reattach the Wi-Fi antenna here. Next, let's do the analog stick ribbon cables. The trick is to be very gentle when you're putting these in. Same with the display cable. You want to make sure you just kind of coax them in. Don't force them in. Okay, next let's do the speaker wires. Now for me, on this side of the speaker wire, I'm also going to push it down as far as possible to keep it away from the Wi-Fi antenna. This may not be something you need to do at all. Okay, and now let's reattach the shoulder buttons. These are super simple to put back because they're already labeled. Okay, now let's remove the battery. Now this is really stuck on there. I actually had to use a tool to help me pry this battery free. And try your best not to bend this battery because it might come in handy later if you want to reuse it at some point. Now I got lucky and the tape actually stayed on the back of my case here, so I'm just going to use that tape for this new battery as well. Now when you buy the battery for an Odroid Advance, it actually comes with double-sided tape, but I'm going to save that for later. I don't need to use it with this install. Alright, now we're ready to put it back together. All you have to do at this point is plug the battery in, make sure it's nice and tight in there, and then just clamp everything shut. Because the plastic case on the 351P has all these little clips on it, it's very easy to put it back together. The 351M, like I mentioned before, won't have any clips, but it's still very easy to put back. Okay, there we are. Let's go ahead and put these four screws back in and start testing this thing out. Okay, so looking at these buttons here, one of the things I really like about them is that the top buttons are concave, just like they were on the original Super Nintendo. The bottom buttons are convex, just like they were on the original Super Nintendo controller. Now one thing that is interesting is that the concave buttons, the light purple buttons, are a little bit shallower than the ones on the bottom. And honestly, it actually takes a minute to get used to because you push down further with those top buttons than you do with the bottom buttons. It's not really an unpleasant experience, but it's something I have to adjust to. After playing with this device for over six months, it's very weird that the buttons go down this far. As you can see here, they're almost flush with the case when you push down on them. But that is not the case with the bottom buttons. And honestly, I didn't really like this at first, but after playing it for a few minutes, I got used to it. And then after about an hour into it, I actually ended up really liking it. But if this is something that might bother you, then I would recommend trying different buttons. Here's the original SNES controller. As you can see here, they're of equidistant height here. And this kind of actually makes me wish that the designer of these buttons had kept them at equal heights like they are on the original controller. But all the same, I still think it's a very pleasant experience. I really love the tiny little pop of color that's now on my device here. Now these buttons are 3D printed, and one of the things about them that's different than the original SNES controller is that they have a matte look and feel to them. So they have a little bit of grippiness to them, and I really like that feeling. If you look at the original Super Nintendo controller, they're both very glossy and shiny. Personally, I like the matte buttons better. Okay, so let's test out my light bleeding mod. Let's see how that worked out. 
Uh, so as you can see here on the left, there's still a tiny little bit of light bleeding on the upper part of the screen on the left, as well as on the bottom part of the screen. And that's unfortunate, but it's still miles better than it used to be. Now, the other thing that maybe I should have thought about is this LED light here. It's really bright, and you can see it coming out of the shoulder buttons. And that's always kind of annoyed me a little bit. So maybe I'll open it back up at one point and put a little bit of tape over that LED light just to dampen down that light as well. But overall, I'm still happy with how this turned out. I think it looks a lot better than before. And it's kind of cool that I was able to fix a lot of the light bleeding problems with just two pieces of electrical tape. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I really just wanted to cut to the chase and show you how to make these mods in case you're interested in doing any improvements on your RG351P or your RG351M. And like you saw in the beginning of the video, I have plenty of other buttons to play around with, so expect more videos like this here in the future. I'm still kind of debating on whether or not I love these buttons or I just kind of like them. I'm not really sure yet. I may end up switching them back or maybe switching them out for some of those other buttons. But for now, I really like this tiny little pop of color and it's breathed in a little bit of new life into this older machine. If you're interested in getting some buttons like this, or you want to upgrade your battery on your device, go ahead and check out the video description where I'll have links to both of those. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming!